What's up everybody, it's Britton from Rocket Vlogs and this video is going to be a little bit weird um, because I'm filming it all on my phone except for the launch portion will be filmed with the big camera. Uh, long story short, I don't have a lot of time so I'm not taking time to set up a tripod and do all of this. Uh, I'm flying a Rocket NSL that's supposed to go like above 30,000 feet on a CTI K300 and uh, to give you an idea of how the Rocket's coming along, here's part of it. Um, Here's some other pieces. It's not done, and we leave tomorrow at 6 a.m. Uh, so yeah, I need to build the rocket, quite frankly. Okay, the rocket is this. It's my Wildman Mach 2. I destroyed the nose cone with my K455 rocket, so I got a new one from Tim. And then the nose cone coupler that I got from Tim because I didn't order the long one because it's just a nose cone is not long enough. So I salvaged this coupler from another kit that I had and it was a weird shape so I had to throw it on the bell sander because one side was like belled out like it was from the end of the filament wire. Guys I'm telling you this thing has been a disaster. It's fighting me every step of the way. Um, if you're not familiar I built this rocket for the instructions for the Wildman YouTube channel. Um, and to be perfectly frank the paint looks bad, really bad. Um, I just wanted it to have some color for the website pictures and for the end of the video. I painted it in the rain, folks. Uh, so if you get close, you'll see a bunch of cracking and uh, yeah, not good. All the paint is unnecessary weight anyway, so what we're gonna do is sand this bad boy down, but I also don't have a vent band. Whoopsie, so I'm going to cut a piece of this tube and make a vent band out of it while we're at it. We're gonna see how much we can take off and uh, get a little more accurate RAS arrow. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a minimum diameter fiberglass rocket built with Proline 4500 black epoxy for both bonding and for fillets. Alamosa, Colorado, where NSL is, has very, very high launch elevation. It's 7,500 feet, so that nice thin air makes it easy for this rocket to go very, very high. Under normal circumstances, like at Black Rock, Nevada, for example, or Arconia, Kansas, this rocket with this motor will go 25, 26,000 maybe with the tail cone closure at alamosa though it is simming to like thirty-five thousand, which i do think is very optimistic but no matter what we get out of it it is slated to be my highest flight to date not my fastest it's not going to go that crazy fast but there is one last thing to address here okay you may or may not be familiar with the lore the recent lore of Cesaroni long 54 millimeter motors the problem is that they tend to uh, they tend to overpressurize and turn into, I don't want to say bomb, but they'll destroy anything they're in. Um, unfortunately, because I like my GPS flight from my JB Weld M1675 rocket so much that this will have GPS on board as well. This is going to have a perfect flight stratologer. If you're in the rocketry world, you know that's risking it for the biscuit. And then we're using sort of the same idea as I used for my three inch rocket in the uh, charge cannons, but uh, courtesy of Tony Alcaster out of, uh, well, I think he lives in California, but he's like, he's a black rock guru and a high altitude research guy. And basically he makes these disposable little shoot cannons that uh, take up a lot less space, but apply the same principle of expansion. And uh, yeah, cause it's going high in really thin air. I want this thing back. I want a new high altitude record. I have about 15 hours to get this rocket done and ready to fly. Um, and also I'm working today. So make it about three hours, realistically. Um, that's it, we're gonna do it. So far, I have 3D printed a sled, done a couple other things, and most importantly, I've been working on a launch tower. Um, I've been posting updates about all this stuff on my Patreon, patreon.com slash rocket vlogs, and while I'm sitting here rambling about my tower, I'll throw in some tidbits here and there. Um, I think that's all I got for you guys. Let's, uh, let's build a rocket in quick haste. All right, here's what we're doing to combat the, uh, the little problem that some of these longer CTI motors have. I've glued in this forward closure with America's favorite uh, non-foaming glue that doesn't foam, unlike Gorilla Glue. 
sarcasm for those of you who watched the video about gluing motors yeah i know allegedly it foams less than gorilla glue it probably doesn't but whatever uh if you're curious about how long grid motor works here you go here's the grain geometry this is pretty cool i know this is a giant disaster over here right now okay don't worry about it this is uh it's it's been a, a whole thing this rocket has been fighting me so uh we're gonna let this dry and then we're putting this guy back in that's our big hunk of propellant with the c-slot core and it's tapered which is pretty cool deeper on one end and then uh yeah then we just put it back in and uh we're going to use what seems like an absolutely unreasonable amount of high temp grease and then it goes in this guy right here and we even got the tail cone closures shout out to my friend josh for donating this uh tapered cti 54 closure to the cause uh yeah that's it i'm gonna get back to work now okay this is dumb but i'm kind of liking how absurd this looks so i think instead of really going for it and taking all the paint off i'm just gonna like smooth everything out and uh we're going to take it down quite a bit because there's a lot of paint on there. We can get a lot of weight out of it. But for the most part, I kind of just want to leave it like this to some extent. And then just like wet sand it out to like 600 and then maybe wax it. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't decided yet. There's a lot of paint though. It would save so much weight to just take it all off. All right. I've decided I'm leaving it like this. Well, not quite. I'm gonna wet sand the whole thing with 1000 grit and then whatever we're left with after that and I get everything smooth is exactly how it's going to fly. This isn't supposed to break any altitude records except for my own. It, uh, it's not that serious. So it's going to be this ugly stick or ugly Betty or the patina king or whatever. I don't have a name for it really, but it's really cool. Cause like I said, I painted it in the rain so you can see where there was runs kind of cool there's a good one right there so I'm gonna wet sand this now not the straightest cut that anyone's ever made but it'll do all right there's a chance it fires on the continuity and there's a chance this is extremely extremely loud yeah all right go for it seems good to me Historic Route 66, right there. We're pretty ahead of schedule, so we decided we had to stop at Four Corners since we had to drive right by it anyway. Yeah. We gotta get it, get it all. All right, well, there you go. That was all Four Corners at once. Yeah, it was. It's kinda, I didn't realize there was like vendor spots. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Also somehow, for hearing about this place my entire life, never knew that it was on like native land. Yeah, I didn't either. Missed that one in school somehow. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. You guys are always here when I'm recovering a rocket that went bad. <laughs> Maybe it's us. Bad luck. <laughs> well, the deployment stuff worked. The high altitude portion of testing that ejection charge setup didn't really do much. Oh, it blew it out the end though. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. It split, but the, yeah, yeah, the charge was underneath the tape, so that's good. Uh, we gotta wait for him to open the range so we can go get the rest of it sitting over there. Stuck the landing. What a beautiful landing. Yeah. 
the rocket might actually be almost completely usable. I'll have to cut off the three inches I decided to save. Oh, where's the case? Uh, oh. So it hit the ground. That's the probably real, real hot. The case is probably yeah. that's why I'm not forward yet. Yeah. Although it came through the side of that a little bit. Yeah, right. that's yeah, pretty typical. The nozzle failure, or at the, at the nozzle. Maybe the rest of the case is in there and just burned. Is it hot? Oh, did you find it? That's a 38. Unrelated, but okay. <laughs> Another CTI case, yeah. Okay, so it's probably not hot then. Yeah, that's Alright, you want to get the sorcerer and the stone shot for me real quick? Oh, uh, it burned enough if I realized the way that might be a problem. Pretty full and dirty. Oh, wait a minute. Something's not right. I think it, the, the rest of the case might be in there. Yeah. You think it's inside there? Yeah, yeah, just forward. Okay. Well, that ain't ideal, is it? You bet the house, and sometimes you lose. We knew that was a possibility with the K300, and we got the bad outcome. Oh well, we did what we could and the good news is that all the electronics survived. Uh, you can see in the video that my altimeter, despite being wildly thrown around under power and repeatedly extending the shock core, I'm sure there's some pretty decent G-forces getting thrown around. My twist and tape switch did not come undone, it still fired my ejection charges and my altimeter, my GPS transmitter, get to live another day. The only thing that happened was my RDF transmitter's antenna got ripped off and that's only about six bucks so I'm not mad at that at all. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey. Uh, thank you for being here for supporting the channel. Don't forget to press the like button. It does a lot more good than you might think. Of course, special thank you to all my Patreon supporters and channel members whose names are scrolling across right now and don't forget you only have until the end of May 31st to enter for a chance to win the four inch wild man dark star you have to be a patreon member five dollars a month or higher but uh you still got time to join and enter the caption contest if you would like a chance to win that nsl west 2024 was a blast uh thank you to everybody that came and said hi and everybody that brought us diet dr peppers and all that uh we appreciate all the podcast love and everything um the full-length nsl video should be out very soon for patreon members and channel members um it will be released in parts with ads on the channel or it will be available for purchase for single time download or whatever if you don't want to join Patreon. Uh, it'll be out soon. I'm working on it. But uh, thank you guys for watching. My name is Brayden. You just watched a Rocky Vlogs video. I'll see you next time.